Harnessing the power of social media for the purposes of getting into a selective college or university. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. This is the second video in a series of videos discussing and frankly dissecting different social media platforms that are popular around the world and in the United States particularly uh, that could be of interest to you as you engage in the long march toward a, an admissions letter at a selective college or university as most of you are in high school or parents of high school students. In the first video, I discussed the power of LinkedIn and my thoughts on LinkedIn. Uh, and today I want to talk about Instagram. Instagram is today's topic in video number two in the series. Instagram, you may know, you may not know, but it is a website that is owned by Meta. Meta also owns Facebook and WhatsApp and some other things. And Instagram is best known as being a site where you can post pictures, photos, uh, of you luxuriating in Bali or, uh, you know, engaging in antics in the Antarctic, Antarctic, I don't know, but I mean, basically it's a photo site and you have the ability on the site to have some, uh, like a caption or like a, a little blurb next to your, or associated with your photo or photos. You can have almost a little photo album. Sometimes you can put a few photos in there. Uh, and you also can Put, I think they're called reels. Don't quote me on that because I'm not really big on Instagram myself. Uh, but I think those are like videos. They're videos, but they're like short, right? So why are we talking about Instagram today um, and not another social media site? I'm talking about Instagram today because I think it's the natural next site that maybe you could consider if you are considering having a social media presence that you curate 100% yourself in order to have an online presence so that in the event a college admissions officer at a selective college or university or any college or university that you're applying to is curious about if this kid is too good to be true from what i'm reading about in his or her college application maybe i just want to search this kid up on on google or DuckDuckGo or something and i just want to see if this kid has pictures or has a professional profile like on linkedin like we talked about the last time so instagram is where you're going to go where again i feel like the risk is higher than with LinkedIn because with LinkedIn, it's like basically an online professional resume of sorts. And, and the peer pressure of LinkedIn is to keep you professional. Whereas Instagram, there's a lot more room for sharing things that could be considered not appropriate or not ideal to share vis-a-vis -vis colleges considering your application for selective college or university. But I still like Instagram overall for certain for certain college applicants. Who are these certain college applicants? I would say that these certain college applicants are those who are artists, who are really creative, who are photographers, who are videographers, who, who uh, may be models, maybe they like fashion, uh, where they can present something beautiful that they've created, uh, either there in the image or something they're taking an image of is the star of their account. And it can even go further than that. I've had students have Instagram pages uh, documenting their weight loss journey or documenting their uh, bulking journey if they're building muscle. Uh, I have seen it all. I have seen also students who have online Instagram communities for their art and other join and other share art too. And it's like a, a like a really uh, welcoming and, and inclusive community that they develop. They get fans, obviously, on there. They get followers, I think they call them on, on, on Instagram. I don't, don't quote me again. I'm not big on Instagram myself, and it doesn't mean I'm against it. I just personally, uh, maybe I don't have a face for Instagram. I don't know. You, you probably would agree with that. But the point being, um, I don't go on Instagram much, but you may want to, and you may want to harness it. I think it's relatively low risk if you are an artist, a creator, if you like beauty, if you like to produce what you deem to be beautiful, obviously beauty is in the eye of the beholder to some extent. Um, so you may want to ask your parent or friend if, if they were you, would they post this publicly? Just to be sure that your taste is not 
beyond the pale um, of what, you know, could could help you uh, with college admission. But if you, let's say, do um, find yourself in an AP art course or, you know, uh, if you really are an artist, you like making claymations or clay works or something with that. I don't know. Maybe you, you do shorts and you, what are the short movies? Like, you know, maybe you literally are a movie maker, a cinematographer. There are so many different individuals who could really benefit from the power of Instagram. Uh, but there's still not a lot of risk because you can't, you don't usually write that much on Instagram relative to some of the other social media sites we'll be talking later about in the series where you could really dig a hole for yourself depending on how many words you would. I would be as... Uh, as minimal minimalistic with your words as possible on Instagram if you're going to go this route. Focus the star being the image or the imagery or the moving image. That should be the star of your Instagram account. Now, again, whether or not you are the creator of the image, you are captured in the image, that obviously will depend on your unique situation. But do not use Instagram if it's just going to be photos of you gallivanting around the world because you're loaded or things that you think are funny in your friend group that you felt like just posting these short videos or short um, images of you like at a party on a Friday night. No, no, those would not be good uses of Instagram. The use of Instagram is again to present in a professional, impressive manner your quality output work. Again, your art in most cases. Again, you could be the photographer, you could be behind the camera, you could be in front of the camera. Maybe, like I said, you are a model or you're very attractive. Um, But I would not go to the step of starting to present privilege. That's very interesting. Obviously, I would argue that being beautiful is privilege, but um, that's one thing. Again, I would not start showing pictures on Instagram of you in your private plane, on your private island, uh, in your private suite. Because that could alienate a college admissions officer at an Ivy League college or university who's making fifty thousand dollars a year, maybe seventy. Um, you know, they they would rather be in a private suite at a hotel. Anyway, the point is, don't do anything to turn people off. The whole purpose of me discussing this is to attract admissions officers further to you in the event, and I'm not even saying it's a common event, but in the event that they just want to sort of fact check. Is this kid who's applying, like really the kid who's applying, let me see what else he or she has online. And then again, if you curate a site like a LinkedIn, or again, in this case, an Instagram, hopefully those will come up to the top of the search results in the search engine the College Admissions Officer is using. And sometimes you can even now, by the way, include social media links in your application. I did not mention that in the first video, but some college applications now allow you to include links in the supplements in particular. Who knows, maybe it will be on the common portion of the common app at some point. Um, which, of course, you could already do in the additional information section of the Common App, which I usually reserve for a short resume if, if I can, uh, if a student is, does not have a resume upload option in a supplement. By the way, in terms of resumes, if you are interested in putting together a really strong extracurricular resume for your college application, no matter the size of the resume you're able to submit, you should definitely click on the link below this video, which is to my course, How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. It's only a few dollars, and it also is less than an hour in length in time. So you're going to learn how to put together a wonderful extracurricular resume for that purpose. Uh, You may include on there a link or links to your social media, but you don't have to. You do not have to. And like I said, some supplements now on the Common App are actually allowing you to literally put in the URL of a social media page or pages if you have them. And so maybe if you're watching this video to this point, you end up having a, an Instagram page. So you can include your URL, your actual www.instagram.com. Or it could just be HTTP. You know, you, you get it. The point is um, you want to put together an Instagram page if you feel like you're going to be able to put your best foot forward with showing stuff you have created in a way that is going to be curated. That's a very key word. You do not want it to be a, a, a the Wild West here. Like I said, no party pictures, no uh, short reels that are funny to you and or your mom or your dad or your best friend, but would make no sense to anyone else who doesn't know. That's going to raise more questions. And like I said, you don't want to really underscore your privilege too much if you have privilege. Privilege is obviously in the eye of the boulder, just like beauty is in the eye of the boulder. But I would say that, you know, I would go so far as, again, if you're, if you 
are a makeup artist and you want to show your work with uh, others and faces and the makeup work you've done, this could be a wonderful platform for you to do that, to show that you're, you, you use individuals' faces as your canvases. And uh, even if you're not going to cosmetology, so maybe you're applying to Yale and you're a makeup artist on the side. Who knows? But you might still want to share this on uh, your application in one way, shape, or form. Uh, so you get my point. Artists really are the ones who I would say would benefit from this. Others who have visual things to share that would be inspirational, motivational, like I said, weight loss journeys, bulking journeys, uh, diet journeys in terms of maybe showing recipes you've made and how pretty the food is or the dessert is. You know, this is a very visual, this is the most, I would argue, visual of the social media sites, Instagram. Now, I will say the bulk of what I've said is also applicable to YouTube. And I'm on YouTube right now, right? You're watching me on YouTube. Um, I'm not really including YouTube as a full-fledged social media site. Yes, you have a lot of comments on YouTube. And yes, I think they're going in the direction of trying to make it sort of more like a social media site. And they probably would define it as social media. But ultimately, it's a video upload site. Uh, and there's a lot of moving imagery on YouTube. But but they, too, have shorts, which I think are the equivalent of Instagram Reels. So if you are putting moving image on Instagram, you could easily do that on YouTube as well. Uh, and similarly, you know, images, obviously static images, you could theoretically have sort of a slideshow effect on a YouTube video, but it would still have to be put into a video format for it to really work on YouTube. But but basically everything I'm saying in this video would also apply to YouTube if you feel more comfortable on YouTube, and you might because you're watching this video most likely on YouTube. Um, so I would say though that the reason I'm doing Instagram separate from some other social media platforms that also have videos or imagery is that that's sort of a whole nother level. The reason I'm doing Instagram here is because you can get away with Instagram with very short number of words. And the more words you write, just like on a college application essay, it presents more risks for you. You know, you, every essay, every essay sentence now has to be really vetted and proofread and made sure that you're not saying anything the wrong way. Same is true with these other social media platforms where you're writing more. Uh, Instagram of the ones that are less professional, more personal in nature, I think is the one where you can get away typing the least or writing the least. And so that's why I would really focus on Instagram here. But YouTube is sort of in, in the same uh, bucket, if you will. Uh, you also, if you're an athlete and your athleticism is very obvious to the common man when he or she watches you, um, like you make an amazing goal every lacrosse game. Uh, or you're just amazing as a gymnast, uh, or you ride horseback, or I mean, uh, you know, or you're, 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 you can see when you row on the, the rowing team, your muscles bulging, or that you were the one who actually pushed the, the, the what is it, a canoe or a kayak, the kayak or canoe to the finish line. Like if, if there are visual demonstrations of your awesomeness that in, in your sports, you could also theoretically harness Instagram if you're an athlete. Uh, I don't think, um, it's my favorite, frankly, for athletes. I think, again, this is more for the creatives of the student populations who are applying to these selective colleges or universities. I think that those are the ones who are going to be able to make the most hay out of Instagram and, and YouTube. Um, but again, theoretically, if there's a real visual presentation of your superiority or your awesomeness or your impressiveness or something that would motivate others visually, um, I think that Instagram is is a real, real option for you. And it should be a very serious consideration for you to have an Instagram page. Now, something that I will say, and I didn't mention again in the LinkedIn video, but I'm going to say here, don't fixate on followers. So many students I've talked to about creating a social media platform page for themselves are very hesitant to do so. Uh, particularly girls, I will say, though that may be just a stereotype from the people I've met. But they're very concerned by doing it because they're concerned that they're not going to have enough followers. They're not going to have enough LinkedIn people or Instagram people following them or liking them or friending them or whatever the word is that they use on whatever social media platform that's concerned. Don't worry about that. Do not worry about that. You do not worry about the number of followers, no matter what social media platform you're on. Uh, because if you worry about that, it's going to paralyze you. You're never going to do it. So you got to get past that fear of, oh my gosh, why would I do this? I'm only going to have 13 people following me. I'm going to look like a loser. No, don't do that. Don't worry about it. This is a platform, especially Instagram, for you to share with the world 
something pretty, something motivational, something positive uh, that you've curated, that you've created. Uh, do and if 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 the people in the world are stupid enough not to click on your page and like it, that's their problem. It's not yours. So definitely make sure that you do not worry about follower count. Now, if you all of a sudden start getting followers, good, more power to you. Let's raise a glass to that. That's exciting. But don't raise a glass of alcohol because you're underage. But you get my point, right? You want to make sure that you keep laser focused on your goal, which is sharing beautiful pictures or beautiful imagery that is going to put you in a positive light and not worry about what doesn't matter, which is the number of, of people liking it or commenting on it or following it or friending you or messaging you. That's not why you're doing this. All right. Now, if you get those things, that could be gravy or icing on the cake. And I'll get more power to you. Be careful, though. There could be people you don't know that start doing that. And you have to be careful. You're underage. So you got to be careful about that side of things. Um, and I would not comment or respond to anyone you don't know in any way, shape, or form, right? Because this is a scary world. But the point being, you really want to try your best to focus on your art, your creation, putting out positivity and beauty in the world. Again, what will this look like as it augments your college application? Will it be a net positive? Always think in those terms, if the college admissions officer is curious about you, you've intrigued them quite a bit as he or she has read your college admissions essay or essays, looked at your resume and your application, looked at your transcript, your teacher recommendations. They're like, this kid can't be real. Or this kid is really intriguing. I got to look this kid up on, on Google uh, or DuckDuckGo or one of these others. So you, you got to say, oh, Yahoo's, still, Yahoo's still around. I think Yahoo's still around. I think I have a Yahoo email. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> I'm getting off point. You get the point. You want to make sure that whatever they click on, because hopefully your Instagram page or your, your social media page will be relatively high up in the rankings, that they and it's your name, it's specific to matching your name on the application, that they what they see is, an, is a net positive. You do not want it to be a net negative. Again, so that's those inside jokes, those funny things uh, you, you do with your friend group. That Do not create an Instagram page with an identifiable name on those. Don't do it. That is a risk you're taking that I would not take. It could really torpedo your application. Do not do that. All right, please, please, please do not do that because Instagram is dangerous if you're going to start taking imagery. You don't want to have them be crime scene photos, for goodness sake, uh, or what would become a crime scene for your application in the event you share things that do not comport with the person you're presenting yourself as on your college application. That's really key. It needs to match. It needs to be believable that this is you. If all of a sudden there's this huge spread between the person you present yourself as on the college application and who your teacher recommenders are, are presenting on the application, your counselor, and then the person you are on social media, then you have failed. You should not do this. Hide it, delete it, destroy it. Don't do it. Same is true across the platforms. So the, if you're going to present something that's not going to comport with what you want to present on your college application, do abort. Do not do a college application. I'm not, I'm, do not, do not, you can do a college application, but maybe you shouldn't do a college application. Maybe you should just go into making Instagram reels and don't even apply to college. But no, if you're going to do a successful college application, it's late. I'm, I'm not making sense today. If you're going to do a successful college application, do not do social media. Do not do Instagram because you don't want photos that are going to put you in a bad light. Now, especially today in a race, uh, race blind, I think that's what they're calling it, world of college admission. I don't doubt that Instagram could be a positive place for you to post online, even though if they're not supposed to really know about you. Um, they're not necessarily knowing your race. They're looking at you on an image. But you, there's no law that says they can't go home at night. And I mean, I hope they don't go home at night. That's sort of sketchy, right? But there's no law that, and a lot of them are working from home. But there's no law that says, I mean, maybe it's written in the guidebooks at, at these Ivy League or other schools that says they can't just double check who this real person is. And if they see you, that could be a net positive. It could be a net negative too, I guess, you know, if they're considering you as something that you're not. Anyway, the point is I'm not going to get down there because that's going to get, that's going to get me in trouble. So I'm not going to do that. But the point, you, you get the point. I've said that so many times. Do you get the point? I hope you get the point. Uh, they can get to know you. Can, they can get to like you through imagery. People are very is, visual beings. We're very visual. So you want to make sure the visuals that you are sharing on an Instagram are not going to put you in any risk for your selective college admissions hopes. All right. So keep that in mind, regardless of if you're an artist or an athlete or an actor and you choose to harness the power of Instagram, uh, you know, be careful. You always got to be careful on social media because it's like basically going out on the street. Uh, 
you know, you don't know who you're going to meet. So you got to be have street smarts. You got to have street sense. Same thing is true on social media. Uh, and I will say you can be as young as 13 to go on Instagram, which I can't believe. I honestly don't, I don't think that's right. Personally, that's my value system. I will personally not encourage you to go on Instagram until maybe you're in 11th grade at the earliest, but maybe you're watching this video younger and you feel comfortable going on. Just, you know, make, make, make sure your parent knows or guardian knows that you're doing this as well. Maybe that they should have access also to your account. So that, you know, if God forbid anything, anyone tries to contact you that's sketchy, you know, again, I'm not advocating for interacting with individuals on social media that you don't want to interact with or at all, if at a, you know, but this is you presenting a curated picture of who you are online that you would be proud of if it ever gets copied. Even if you choose to delete the page in the future, you're going to be proud of it if it gets associated with your professional resume or your professional life when you're running for Senate in 25 years, <laughs> you know, so definitely don't add anything online that you would not want to come back to haunt you because people do somehow, you know, they cash these sites, even if you take it all down later. So make sure it's something you would be proud of. So now we did Instagram, a little bit YouTube today as well. We're going to do some other ones. We did LinkedIn the last time. Uh, as we populate more of these videos in the series, I will put links to them all below this video. Uh, again, my name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. That means I work with students and parents throughout the entire college admissions process and help them in their journey to reach their college admissions goals. If you want to learn how to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to my website, which is collegemeister.com. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or also consider subscribing to my channel. Feel free to tell your family and friends about it as well. Until next time, my name is Craig Meister. Stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.